So now we need to build the circuit and take our measurements. We need a 1,5 volt cell and we're going to use a cell holder. Then we're connecting one terminal. In the case of this circuit, it actually doesn't matter which terminal because we're not using LEDs. But anyway, let's connect the positive terminal to lamp 2, L2. So here is L2. We screw the bulb into the bulb holder. And then we can connect the red wire coming from the positive terminal of the cell and one side of the bulb underneath that screw. Make it nice and tight. Give it a little tug, yes that's firm, and that one as well. And then we can just make the bulb holder span the distance between the two screws and then we'll be able to tighten that one when we've got our next component underneath there. So now we have the positive terminal of the cell connected to one side of L2. The other side of L2 must be connected to the other bulb, L1. Here's the other bulb, again we screw it into the bulb holder and we can simply use the same connection there, the same screw, and just tighten it nicely. Now both bulbs are in place. The other side of the bulb is connected to a switch. Now we're not going to use fancy switches. In fact, this can simply be our switch, whether we touch there or not. So when we touch, you can see the bulbs shine. They shine quite dimly. I'm not sure whether you can see it because it's a bit bright here, but they are shining. So when we touch like that, the switch is closed. When we open like that, the switch is open. So this acts as our switch. So automatically, of course, that switch is connected to the negative terminal since it is the wire from the negative terminal of the cell. Then we need switch 2 across L1. So this is L1 and we need a switch across it. So one could use a wire, just connect a wire underneath here and when you touch it across then the switch is closed, when you lift it then the switch is open. So we secure one end of the wire, that's the side of the switch that is connected to the circuit. And then the other end of the wire, when we touch it down then the switch is closed when we lift it up, then the switch is open. So there are our two switches. That's switch two, and this one is switch one. To make it easier, I'm actually going to connect a crocodile clip here to the negative terminal to make switch one just easier to work with so that I could clip it there to make switch one closed. Then we have V1 and V2. We only need one multimeter. It can be both V1 and V2 and it must be set as a voltmeter so we turn it to V20. So now we need to take our measurements. First setup, switch 1 must be closed and switch 2 must be open. So the crocodile clip is switch 1 so we close it over here. This is switch 2, we keep it open. We can see that both of the bulbs are shining. Now we need the potential difference across switch 1. You can see switch 1 is just a good conductor now because it's closed. Place our voltmeter across the closed switch 1, 0 volt reading. A good conductor never has a voltage across it. V2 is across lamp 1, the open switch and that is 0.63 volts. We're not asked to get the voltage across the other bulb, but let's just do it anyway. 0.69 volt. If the two bulbs were identical, then they'd be exactly the same voltage across each. Let's just get V cells. 1.31 volt. Notice this cell is a 1.5 volt cell. But that doesn't necessarily mean that its voltage is exactly 1,5 volt. It's probably a little bit flat and now it's 1,3 volt. Next setup, we need switch 1 open. So that's the crocodile clip. We open it up and switch 2 must also be open. We can see that the bulbs do not shine. It's a broken circuit so that's not surprising. They're both off. Now we need V1 which is across the open switch. So it must be across this gap. So one probe we touch here and the other one there, what do we get? 1,33 volts. Now we want to measure V2, which is the voltage across switch 2, which is open. It's also the voltage across L1, bulb 1. Unsurprisingly, we find 0 volt. Next circuit, again, switch 1 must be open, but now switch 2 must be closed. 
their switch 2 is closed. Unsurprisingly, the two bulbs do not shine. It's a broken circuit, so they can't shine. Both of them are off. We measure V1 across the open switch, 1,33 volts. And now V2 across that closed S2 switch, which is also across L1, and we get 0 volt. Last circuit. Both of the switches must now be closed. So we already have switch 2 closed. So all we need to do now is to close that one as well. And you can see that this bulb, which is called L2, does shine. But this bulb, L1, does not shine. Why not? Because this switch has short-circuited this bulb. Current is flowing through here through this bulb, bypassing that bulb, rather traveling along the easy path, the short circuit, back to the cell. So this bulb is short-circuited. That's bulb L1. It's off. And L2, it does shine, and it shines brighter than it shone when both of them were shining. In other words, when that switch was open. So now we need V1. V1 is the voltage across that crocodile clip and now the crocodile clip is connected and so it's a good conductor zero volt and now we need voltage two so we place the voltmeter across switch two and we get zero volt because in effect we are measuring the voltage across that good conductor and the voltage across a good conductor is zero volt we quickly disconnect the circuit because any circuit with bulbs in it has a very high current strength flowing when the circuit is connected because bulbs have a low resistance and that can make the battery flat quickly.